Hello there. Well, we did that Midland 77805. I put a new preset in it because if you remember, unless the radio was upside down, there was no meter on transmit. So the other radio from this gentleman, uh, I think he says it's his sunset. We've got a Midland 77104 and it is the UK version. So it's the better one. The one you can always tell because it's got the 9 printed on it. Whereas the D version, which isn't as good as on receive, usually um, hasn't got that printed because it's just an up down so first thing which is disturbing to me is why is the power lead so short you know it's snipped off why is that so short I'm not even sure our wholesalers have these anymore and it's not one we make Any clue on the moulding? If anybody knows who those mouldings are by, do tell me. So, we're going to have a very short lead to connect to our crocodile clips. Oh, and there's no fuse. We've got to do something about it. We have got to extend that with a fuse holder. I can't send it back with no fuse. So... He's going to get it extended. We'll splice an extra bit of wire on. I think I've got one of these power leads left in stock. I never understand the people on eBay who put in the description rare. Because nobody is putting in a, a search criteria is rare, are they? You don't put Baby Midland Power Lead, rare. You might put in Baby Midland Power Lead, 77104, etc. But you wouldn't put the word rare. So if you put it in the title, it's just a waste of a word. Like, look with two eyeballs. Or at science. That's all right on a market store. Not in a dis not in the search box. Or what's going to be in the search box. So I don't know anything about this set. So it's come with no mic. And we do have... We've got a few of these left. And I don't know what we're going to do. Because everything else seems to not have a screen bleed. And so chances are that most mics are going to... Um, so we'll take that brand new mic out of the box and then we can say we've tested it so it's going to be this standard Maxon pinout now if you've got a Sapphire X4000 or a uh, what's the other Cybernet one with the 5 pinned in the SMC Oscar 1 the Barracuda HP 940 this is not the pinout. You would need to change two wires over. I think it is the pinout for this. So he's got a dodgy display. That might be a dry joint. Might be the channel switch being dirty with fag, uh, fag in it. So it powers up, but then so did his other one. So if you remember, his other one had been reverse polarity. Someone put a makeshift power lead bodged in instead of through the 2.1 millimeter plug on the back of his Midland 77805 UK, the Porter Pack version. So this is the baby Midland with the speaker in it, the better version, the one that works well and usually does four watts. And no idea what the date is today. So for a joke, we'll put 25 May 24. Midland 77104 UK 3030853 and he's at St. Helens. I used to tune an organ at St. Helens when I was doing my apprenticeship. I watched a mouse walking up and down the wall in that church. So we are going to need to work on that power lead. 
So that's the answer to my question, what is he going to do with a short power leader? We're going to splice that extra bit on it. So. Well, it does hiss. So that's good. Plug our extension speaker into the testing instruments. Can't speak. Imagine it's still got this ongoing infection thing which is very slowly going they still expect 10 weeks chest x-ray next week at the hospital just to make sure it uh, is really going and there's nothing else they'll see through me won't they well mr 21 i'm afraid we're gonna to have to put you down that's what they'll say I'll have to say my my closing words, ten ten till we do it again. One of the, one of the wonderful things I love about ham radio, um, you've got to remember I I it was nineteen seventy nine I was first licensed as a radio amateur, and then I was I ran a, a television and audio business and we did HMV dealership. And then I found my way into two-way radio. And uh, then CB came along at the end of 1981. And so I was a radio amateur two years before CB came along. And I've always been on 77s. Back then, people said to you when you became a radio amateur, oh, what band are you going to be on? So I thought, well, 77s is so difficult to achieve because there wasn't really any commercial equipment out there. So it was a matter of converting old business radios onto the handband, like High Westminster's and things like that, or building stuff from scratch. And so I felt that talking to people on 77s, they'd be more technical than, say, on 2 metres where there was commercially available stuff. And remember, it was a B licence that I first had, so it was... Frequencies above, 2 metres and above, you couldn't access 4 metres or 6 metres or HF with a B licence until you'd done Morse code, which I did in about 1991, just for completeness, not because I want to go on that. So anyway, one of the things I find absolutely wonderful are some of the CB phrases, like, I am square-wheeled at the traffic lights, Mr Chippy will say. And so we drop these into our ham radio conversations, and they think... I'm an ex cb -er, and I find that amusing, because I'm not. OK, we've got put picture in picture on. I'll tell you I'm putting picture in picture on. Just switch it to the other power setting, so that looks a bit low. That now looks a bit high. Ready to, oh, it's not, it's 3.6 watts on channel 20. And we're drawing 1.01 amps. Let's go to channel 40. Guess the digits on this set. 3.5. And that might not get fixed. Low power. Pop the test set onto the low power scale. So now we're looking at the 3 watt scale. So it's doing... 300 milliwatt, <laughs> can't speak, 300 milliwatts. Deviation on this test set, let's go back. Let's try that again. 350 milliwatts. I was on channel one. Go back to full power, deviation, wow, it was about 1.8 on this test set. And now, whether it's on frequency, the test gear's been on about 20 minutes, so we're not going to take it for gospel till it's been on half an hour. It's 27.79114, so it probably is right. I'll just put 0.79114 there. I won't pull the rest of the digits in. So let's see what it's doing on receive. First, oh, just on back on transmit. It's a full set of bars. So just put that in there doesn't have a meter lamp, uh, doesn't have PA, 
um, didn't come with their mic and its speaker appears to be working. So we'll just dial in the same frequency for receive, so we're going to put 27.79115 so it will be fair. I'm not going to test it spot on frequency when the set's off frequency slightly. Not noticeably, and in no way does it matter, but I just like to do these tests as spot on as possible. 79125. Seven nine. That's not seven nine. There we are. Seven nine one one five. So we're at a deliberate off frequency, and it's receiving. And we go with the sign and meter and see how well it's receiving. Very nice. Four. 0 0.4 microvolts for 12 dB. It's 0 0.36. And it's even doing 20 at 0 0.95. On 100 microvolts, it's showing S5. So I'll put two bars, so I want it to read a bit more than that on receipt, if it will. It could be that the detector's out causing that. So on squelch, turn the squelch to full, and let's see where the maximum squelch is on the radio. 30, 100, duh, 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 duh. and unfortunately it never opens. Which is really useful, isn't it? Not. Turn the signal generator back to nothing. Set threshold on the radio. Signal generator back on. It's not point four, so that's fine. But we do need to bring that down. So we also proved that our standard replacement mic does fit this type of radio. Right, I'll turn it off. And I don't know why one of the screws is coming out. Weird. So this is going to be something like 1987, this set. And that was the preset I took out of the, his dad's set, the 805. So, if you put it upside down, it loses contact. Put it the right way up, and there's just enough weight for it to make contact. I could probably have cleaned it and saved him half a pound. The next thing we've got this stuck on sticky thing. wait for the soldering iron to come up. Oh, it looks genuine set. I can't see any shenanigans on that. You can see the VCO has never been touched. Let's see if my soldering iron's warmed up enough. I'll try and get the transmit done before my voice gives out and then come back after lunch. But that's a nice working set. It's doing 3.6 watts. Um, deviation looks a bit low, but we haven't tested it on the 
other test set because I like that second opinion. Uh, receiver is really hot, so it's just a matter of dancing around the edges and bringing it up a bit, I think. But that, if we did an on-the-air test now, I think that would sound and perform great. Right, power it back up. And let's run through the main meter let's go through transmit so it's the I want the center of each peak at least it hasn't been blown up like his dad's one to be honest only that first one made any difference. I wouldn't make one of those garage mechanics who whistles through the teeth and says, Oh, I don't know who looked at this last. Which is always amusing if it was them. I'll tell you what, we're at 3.9 watts. Just peak it with that one. There we are, about 4.01. Let's see what it is on the other channels. Channel 1, 4.05. Channel 40, 3.95. Current consumption now. Back to channel 20 is 997 milliamps. So we brought it up half a watt and we're drawing less current because it's tuned properly. Right, low power. Actually, it's 410 milliwatts. So it's hardly to a touch. Back to full power. So do the deviation later. I haven't got the other test set on. And I just want to do the power meter. It's reading a full set of bars now. So let's put it on low power. It should be one on low power. And it is. So it doesn't need adjusting. So it's all come right. It would be that one at the back if it needed adjusting. So I'll come back after lunch and um, we'll go on, to, go on to the receiver and we'll start by just doing the deviation. Okay, so let's see what we need to do. Well, it's too, too dead. It needs to come up a little bit on deviation. I seem to recall it's that one. Wow, but it isn't. Is it that one then? Wow, look, it's that one. See, the upper one must be squelch. Right. So, got 1.8 on that test set, I got two on the other. Now 2.2 to a peak of 2.5 kilohertz. So I'll switch that test set off. And go over to this one again. See what this one says it's doing. Wow, oh it's wrong mode. Well, it's lying today, it says two. Right, we're not touching the VCO, it's never been fiddled with. And now we'll look at how on frequency it is. So, we had 27.79114 before we'd warmed up. 27.79114. 
and then I've got 2779118. Because 2779118 is what we'll write down. We'll just pop that onto the frequency. It doesn't really need intervening, but I will just do so. There we go, 79126. Right, so we did the power meter. We will now make sure the signal generator is set for the real frequency. go and let's have a look at the radio now so we've already got excellent receive There's 100 microvolts on the signal generator look at that on the oscilloscope turn the volume up or the trace up we'll do the volume it's quicker and just check the detector is set for maximum output A tiny, tiny little bit of adjustment there. So we're going to go to just turn the squelch down. Oh, about 5 dB on the sine meter, and see whether we can get any improvement. Not with that tool or not. None on that. None on that. Oh, fraction on that one. And none on that. So we've just made the tiniest adjustment to the detector. And the tiniest adjustment to that, everything else was right. So I'll be surprised if we've, got, we've gained anything on the receiver. But here goes. So for 12 dB, we've got 0 0.37. I'll show you the attenuator. So there's 3... Two, four, six, and a bit, we'll call it seven. For 10 dB, 0 0.31. And for 20 dB, 0 0.81. So we have made an improvement, which is incredible, so... He's probably got another 20 yards range now. So we have brought the power up nearly half a watt. Brought a little bit up on the receipt. So it will work better. But I say if we'd have done a scratchy corner test. It's just so marginal this. You wouldn't, you wouldn't notice. Now what we will notice. Is the S meter. If I can pull that up a bit. Now the S meter has actually come up. So although that is the S9. What, we, what I want to do is to set it so that it's just not on the plus 30. So with that 100 microvolt signal on, I'm going to fiddle with the... No, it's at full. So you can't kind of do that. I have moved it a tiny bit, so there you go. So it's right, but they always read a little bit low. So it's now 3. So it is correct. The switches all work. And the potentiometers all work. The one and only socket, the two sockets work. So we just need to do the squelch, which I've now fiddled with. <clears throat> and let's put the squelch to full. Yeah, that's the right thing. So there's the squelch on full. I'm going to put 100 microvolts on the signal generator. And then let's see if. 
Which one was it? Is that surely it's that one. That's maximum sensitivity. So let's have a look where it is. It is 1.5 millivolts. It's higher than I would like. But at least it comes in, which it didn't before. Well, I don't know, the point is of having a squelch, which when you turn it to full, no signal will open. So we'll just reset to threshold on the radio. The sensitivity was fine before. It's now 0.28, so it's even better. <clears throat> Right, so apart from doing a fuse holder, we're done. Well, that's a nice set. Mind you, so his other is now. So I've got the check he's already got a mic for this. I'll unplug the test equipment. We'll solder this back on. Speaker sounds like it works. No, I think it got a dodgy screw or something, or I don't know, was it the other set? No, it's that one, isn't it? Why isn't it fitting? I don't know. Let's put a different screw in. And let's put that screw in that position. It's fine. It could be that the case screw in the opposite case side, because you've got a bit of latitude in the case, it's possible that it was not quite in the right position. Anyway, it works now. So we're going to have to find out whether he's got a mic or not. To find out whether he needs a power lead for his... 77805, which I'm sure he does. So the idea is to not quite tighten them up, manipulate the case halves so they fit, then tighten them up. Right, roof aerial. <clears throat> well done, Roger. Well, we never looked at that, did we? It's got to be dirt in the channel selector switch. 
because the fact it lights I don't know See if we can find a, a bit of a dry joint. What I don't want to do is to take this to the next service level. I'm not looking for things to do. that one if I have to get Mr Chippy to go through this for dry joints it takes it up a level so oh, I'm probably short the two together there Well, you know what? That was it. No, it isn't. If we leave it at that, there's no fee. If I have to get Mr Chippy onto it, there is. These people do green laning. It's not like it's in some little collection under a glass case looking immaculate. It's a workaday set. No, you know, Roger. Nah, they're all having the dinner. Right, there we go. Midland 77104 UK. Works very nicely. Just needed a little bit of service work there. unlike his dad's set which had an awful lot wrong with it so thanks for watching Midland 77104 UK 
from around about 1987.